Hello, my creative friends, and welcome to another episode of The Daily Prompt. In this episode, I wanted to address a user question that really comes up from lots of writers uh, and has done for many years, um, which is basically, listen, I've already written a bunch of projects. Um, aren't there already tons of projects out there? Why don't you just hold a competition if you want to build this indie film studio? And then, you know, pick the, pick the projects from all these already existing viable projects. And, uh, and furthermore, not everybody wants to do a course in order to be able to get into a writer's room in order to be able to write stuff for your independent film project. <laughs> All fair enough. So what I wanted to talk about in this video is uh, the idea of viability and the idea of incentive. And to clear up a couple of misconceptions about this. So this uh, question came to us obviously from someone who hasn't watched this entire series because I have actually addressed all of this probably a couple of times in this series. Uh, but there's a lot of content here and it takes a long time to go through it. So let me just recap it as, as, as to give you some framework for it, so particularly if you're new here. The idea is uh, I've been looking for material to produce for about 20 years now. Um, when I couldn't find anything, I started teaching screenwriting from the producer's perspective to help try to help writers understand why they're writing material that producers can't use and <laughs> creating this vicious negative feedback loop. So, uh, so along the way, <laughs> I got sort of sucked down this rabbit hole and went further and further and realized it's more and more complex than I thought it was at the beginning, admittedly, um, and found new possible ways to solve some of these problems. So uh, let's go with the first question. So aren't there scripts everywhere? The answer is yes, very much so. There are thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of scripts out there. Um, the, the problem is that almost none of them are actually viable. Now the writer says some have a viable product to share, but that's from your perspective. That's from the writer's perspective and a writer believing their project to be viable doesn't make it viable to the producer on the producer's end. So this writer also went on in a follow-up uh, comment to say that they have eight viable projects to which I, I to which I'm a little incredulous only because uh, that may be totally true I don't know maybe this is an award-winning writer and and they've already been produced and maybe they are a legitimately viable writer and so I'm not going to I don't want to comment on the specifics of that situation but the um, but the reality is my production company looked had look had eight for 18 years had a had an open submissions policy where we received submissions from all around the world writers of all levels from complete novices who clearly didn't know what they're doing to uh, intermediate level writers who i mean they i can see where you're going but you're not there yet to professional level this is actually decent writing but it's not actually usable so what we found in 30,000 project submissions is fewer than one in a thousand projects were actually viable. And by viable, I mean something that we could actually go out and produce. Now, what you might think as viable is, hey, I've, 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 I've ticked all the boxes for, you know, the, the story structure or it's a, you know, I won a competition or, or, you know, any, any, I don't know what you're thinking of something as viable, but to a producer or a production company, a project is viable when we could go out and make this right now. We don't need to do any further development on this project. We could go out and get investors for this project. We could go out and package this project with um, either a named director and actor, or even maybe an emerging or up and coming director, actors, uh, the crew would be interested in making this. We could achieve this on the budget that the marketplace would be able to recoup that budget. Viability of your script is, it's a tricky little nuance. It's a tricky little detail because it's its different for different kinds of producers as well. So it, a producer who's making, you know, $100 million plus 10 whole studio films is, it has a very different set of criteria than a, an indie film producer or a micro budget producer. They're very, very different criteria. If you're making movies on a, on a micro budget or, or a very, very low budget, Certain things that are kind of almost stock standard fare in, in movies might be completely, completely inviable for that project. Now, if you are writing something you think is a $5 million film, a $10 million film, and you're submitting it to someone who's looking for a $300,000 film, 
you're you are submitting something that is not viable even if that project is potentially viable to another producer now what now statistically what i'm suggesting is that about 85 percent of everything that was submitted to us would not be usable by any producer or production company so i'm not talking about you've written a five million dollar film and you've submitted it to a three hundred thousand dollar producer i'm talking about you've written something that neither of them none of them micro macro none of them could use 85% of the projects that we received were that. We're not, vi we're not viable to anyone. A good chunk of projects, probably 15% or so, I wouldn't say they were ready to be produced. So here's, here's part of the problem. Viability includes the necessity of further development and rewrites. So if you submit a project that's not quite ready to actually go shoot right now, like we would need to change it in some ways. The third act isn't working or the 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 character is kind of flat. We need to bump that character up. There are there are details and nuances that will have to go back and be refined and possibly changed. They might have ripple effects throughout the story, which might require other major changes. Uh, developing a project is a, is a complicated process. There's a lot of moving parts involved. And so uh, a writer will often think this is, a, this is a viable project and a producer will look at it and go, this is not a viable project. So when a writer says they, have a, they already have a viable product or eight viable products, I, I, my question is if you have viable products, why are they not being made right now? Because they are so hard to find these viable products that if a producer or production company is, is out there trying to make films, if you have the project that's right for that company and it's a viable project, they're going to want to know about it. A, because it serves their interests. They're, they're likely to be profitable because of it. They're likely to get awards or win uh, the actor's attention that they want to be working with or or any of a number of, of, of aspects of what viability ultimately is. And so my big challenge is as an independent producer, someone who's looking for material for many, many years, did not have money to pay for ongoing script development to get a project in that I go, this is a really good idea. It's a decent story. The writing's not too bad, but we need to completely redevelop this thing. It's not viable for us at that point, for us. So that is the one in a thousand number, right? So where we found one in a thousand projects, we're like, ooh, we could go shoot this right now. So, so the one in a thousand number is very specific to the producer, but the probably 85, 15%, 15% 85% is the broad swath, right? So, and that's all levels, by the way. There are people writing at a professional level. Like you're writing something that looks like it could win a screenwriting competition. Maybe that does win a screenwriting competition that a producer can't go off and use. Here, why not just hold a competition was one of the questions in this comment. A competition, as I've mentioned in, in previous episodes uh, or episode, anyway, uh, it, the, the problem with a competition is that you have to pick a winner. <laughs> um, if, you, if we open ourselves up to a competition, it's the same as opening ourselves up to open submissions because ultimately if we if we have if you the, the problem with screenwriting challenge with screenwriting competitions is that they, they have to pick a winner they can't just sort of go well we had 10,000 submissions they all kind of were not very good this year so we're just going to keep the awards money <laughs> no you pick the best of the lot that doesn't mean any of them are actually viable the the number of films made from winners of screenwriting competitions is uh, if someone knows please post it in the comment because i believe it's very very low almost nil almost none why is that you might be able to get a, an agent out of it you might be able to get some meetings out of it but to actually see the film go on and get made it's all it almost never happens why because those projects while being very well written while being great stories while being very interesting and entertaining are not viable to the producer so if they're not viable to the producer we can't invest the money we can't invest the time to go out and make those projects so you end up with a situation where there's lots of people writing lots of stuff. Yes, there are scripts everywhere, but we can't do anything with those projects. So how do we solve this problem? So you say not everyone wants to do a course. I totally agree. I don't even want to teach a course. I don't want to be here trying to convince writers to go through this. I don't want to be here uh, teaching people the nuances of story and story design and storytelling and how to make stuff. But 
that which hinders your task is your task, as quoted by the great late, late great Sanford Meisner. That, that which hinders your task is your task. You can't, what are we going to do? Okay, I, we don't want, you don't want to do a course. I don't want to teach anything. <laughs> um, then we can't find material. What do we do? I guess we just don't make any movies then. Well, no, let's try to solve the problem, right? So I don't want to teach a course. I didn't build a course. Uh, the, the resistance in this line is not everybody wants to join you, Jeff, to go through your system to, to be able to be part of your writer's room at the end. Why don't we just have a competition to get people into the writer's room? Because the writer's room is created as an incentive, the reason you don't want to go through all this is because you don't want to, if you've already written eight projects, you think you know all the stuff already. So you don't want to have to go through it all again. Although I would argue that you obviously don't have all the answers. Otherwise, you would have those doors open. And I don't mean that in any way condescending or disparagingly. That I'm in the same boat. Uh, and I was in the same boat for years and years where it's like, I know all this stuff. How come the doors aren't opening to me? And the doors weren't opening to me because I didn't know all this stuff. Because I thought I knew more than I knew. And so you have to go th You have to go through the whole process. You can't go through bits and pieces of the process. You can't get really good at writing screenplays and have no clue about how the production process infuses into the creative process. If you, if you don't have that, you're not ready. You haven't done the whole process. But most writers don't want to do that. So the point is... If not everyone wants to go through that process, that's fair enough. But what I'm building is trying to solve, what I'm building is, is, an, is an attempt to solve the fundamental intrinsic problem that writers don't have the skills producers need them to have, even though they're sure they do. So if, how do we solve that problem? I can't solve it by opening up a competition and just getting writers to circumvent it all. Like, okay, that's great for those two or three writers who have who have those skills, but what about everyone else who's trying to learn this stuff along the way? So what I'm trying to build is an incentive for writers. If, if there's this incentive at the end of this, we'll make a film you write. If, the, if this incentive exists, will it give writers enough fuel enough of a target enough of a of a motive and rationale to persist through the hard parts writing sorry rewriting by anyone's account is hard to do why because you have something that's already sort of makes sense and now you got to pull pieces of it apart which are going to ripple throughout the rest of the thing and you've got a piece of it and you've got to make it work again most writers handle rewriting by tweaking little words here and there, or doing a whole new draft, just chucking that one and doing it all over again. And that you're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You're going to, you're never going to refine. You're never going to, to perfect your project because you're always looking to something else, right? So that's just one example, right? So so how do we get people to actually learn how to do that? How do we get people to persist when the going gets really tough, when it's hard, when you're like, I don't know what to do and this sucks and I had a great idea and now it's a terrible idea. What's going to get you to keep going through at that point? Some sort of incentive has to be there. On day one in my system, we figure out what's your fuel, what's your motivation, what's your goal, what's the target? What is it that you really want? See the end before you begin this whole process. If you can really see the end and then you, can, you have a fire from that, that's gonna give you motivation through the process. But even that is gonna burn out and wear out along the way. So, so we need some way to keep you going. We need some way so that you'll persist and actually and actually develop the skills that writers just don't seem to have according to the submissions that come in. Now, I'm not criticizing, I'm not, I know a lot of people get really defensive about this stuff. I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying we had 30,000 projects come in. We found 24 or 26, I can never remember how many we had exactly. We found 24 or 26 projects. By the time we reached out to the writers of those projects, every single one of them was optioned somewhere else. Somebody else found them first. So it goes to show you that if you have the one, if you do create that thing, it will get picked up somewhere as long as you, as long as you get it out there in the world. So what do we do? How do we fix that? 
that's what I've tried to build. That's what I'm trying to build. I built the system. Now we're going to try to build the thing on the back end. So we're never going to hold a competition for that. If you believe that your work is, you should be able to jump, skip right over all this stuff because you have been doing it for years and years. And so you're, you're well and truly beyond all this. You want that part of it, but you don't want to go through this part of it. I do want to sort of open up the possibilities to more people. Once the machine is rolling, once we're making multiple films each year, once, once this engine has fully kicked into gear, there will be more room for possibly making a film that's not developed within this. And at that point, I probably would like to be able to open it up to more. I did say earlier in an earlier episode that if you go off and you, you just learn stuff here, you, but you go off and make your own film somewhere else, I want you to tell me about it so that those films can become a part of this distribution model that I'm trying to build. But <laughs> what if you want to write something and jump into the production side? So what I, so I had this idea. Uh, I, last year, I did this series called The Feedback Loop. Last year, the year before. I did this series called The Feedback Loop where I took uh, the first three pages of there were 12 different writers. I spent an hour with each one. So each episode is spending an hour with one writer on their first three pages of their script. I went through word by word, page by page, picked it apart, help you understand what the producer is seeing, how, how the reader is reviewing your project. I'll put a link to the series here. Uh, go, go watch those episodes. A lot of these projects, writers would have thought that their project was viable at that point. They would have thought it was something for serious consideration. None of them were, no doubt disrespect to any of those writers um as hopefully you can see through those episodes there's a lot of nuance to all this but one thing i did do i was hoping to do a further series of that i just have not had time to do that and there's this is not an announcement or anything uh who won't be doing that for a little while yet there's just not the time right now uh but there is a submissions page uh fast the the feedback loop.co slash submit and I'll put the link here somewhere, uh, where you can submit the first three pages of your project. If you're convinced that you should be in part of the writer's room, but you don't need to do all this other work to get there, if you think your work is viable right now, but you don't really want to be under the microscope of being on one of these episodes and having your work picked at, um, why don't you submit there your three best pages and only three pages why don't you submit your three best pages and say somewhere in the subject line uh, for writer's room consideration? Or why don't you just put in, in parentheses viable? Okay, so then I'll know that you've watched this and you're trying to submit a vi what you think to be a, a viable project. And what I'll do is I'll simply have a quick skim or read closely if I, if I have the time. Uh, and I will respond with... Uh, the project's not quite viable yet. I think you need to go through this. Or, you know what? I think you're right. Your your work is is ready for this. We're still not going to be doing it at this point in time um, because I'm trying to build this engine. But at some point, once the engine is built, let's have another look at this project because I think it might be viable. Now, do not send me your log line because I don't want to. I don't want other ideas. Uh, in my head, I want uh, I want the ideas that are developed in the writer's room to be in my head. I want those to be my my focus. I don't want to, f I don't, and I don't want anyone to accuse me of taking their idea and running with it, which can happen when you put your log line out there. Um, and if you th and and I would prefer your first three pages because I'd like to know how you establish the story. Uh, but if you think your first three pages are not your best three pages, you can feel free to send me your three best pages. No more than that. I don't want a synopsis and I don't want a full screenplay. So if you're interested in doing that, I'll put a link here, somewhere here, or somewhere in the description. Um, so you can go ahead and try to submit that. But the big picture here, understand this. Because if you send me three pages and I go, these aren't really viable, and you go, yeah, they are. <laughs> like We're just going to be at odds anyway. So... Ultimately, the bottom line is this. Uh, producer or production company needs a script that they can go out and package, that they can go out and get money for, that they can go out and establish a team for, that is, a, is an extraordinary project on paper, right? We go out and make the film. Who knows? It's anybody's guess if we turn that into an equally extraordinary film uh, or if we butcher it or if the script wasn't that great in the first place. And so all the holes get exposed. At the end of the day, the, the I've been I've been 
writing since I was 12 years old. I nearly had a couple of projects sold when I was in my teens. Um, I've been writing and around writing since I was a kid and I have been actively looking for material for, or I had been for the past nearly 20 years. It's a long time and I've looked at a lot of projects. I'm not saying this because I want to hurt you or because I want to damage you or, or make you disappointed in any way. The viability is just not there in most cases. And because of that, it makes it really hard for the independent producer to go out and, and make something. Now, to be clear, I could go out and make a film next week. There's There are scripts everywhere. We could go out and make something. That's not the issue. The issue to me is, are we going to be able to make something that's going to be able to find an audience? Are we going to be able to make something that breaks through? Are we going to be able to make something that is what I would consider extraordinary in the marketplace. I've the, One of the reasons I'm not interested in making horror films is because I had great horror films when I was a teenager. <laughs> the great horror film ideas when I was a teenager. I just didn't want to make those kinds of stories. So if we wanted to make horror films, we could go out and make them this week. We could go out and make them next month. It's not That's not an issue. What I'm trying to make are that higher caliber of stuff. And now that I've gotten this far down this this rabbit hole, uh, you know, I'm busy building this this machine. So my my goal is to build a, a creativity engine that's going to help writers everywhere, and that's going to take some time and it has to be built a certain way. So um, anyway, <laughs> for fear of getting too rambly here at the end. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, particularly about the ideas of viability or about incentive. Uh, I would love for you to post them in the comments below. Uh, I thank you so much for watching. I know we go, this goes off in a number of different directions depending on where the brain goes in the moment. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. If you like this, if you want to be a part of this or just follow along with this, make sure to click that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when new episodes come along. Even though we're not super active on the social media, be sure to, um, to, to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that. Um, and attend our webinar, you know, join the system if you're interested in actually going all the way and developing the true skills that producers need writers to have that simply is not taught anywhere else. I've not found any other source that teaches what I teach. And simply because I'm not here to teach you i'm here to guide you through a process so that we can go make films at the end so um hopefully that makes sense any questions let me know thank you for watching uh please 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 continue to take action the only way you're going to get there is to take action regularly in an ongoing way don't just write when you're inspired once a month Take action every single day. That's what FAST is set up to help you do. So uh, if you're not going to join us, at least find some way to make that happen for you. Otherwise, you're pushing it off into the future indefinitely and it's not going to happen. So if you don't have an incentive, join us for the first month in FAST Screenplay. We're going to show you how to capture your that that passion, that fuel that's going to drive you through the whole thing and, and, and nail down what that incentive is, whether it's with us or in your own thing. So anyway, enough from me. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.